Saying that I love Jesus and that I believe he is God's son who died on the cross for our sins and rose from the grave on the third day does not feel like it should be such a bold statement. But in a world that encourages us, be authentically you or Christian, oftentimes the translation of that feels like be authentically you unless you're a Christian and in which case, don't let that out the bat. But this is Resurrection Weekend where we get to celebrate what it means to be a Christian. And as a girly who has been through some really difficult things, it is only by my faith and through my relationship with God that I now have a life that is characterized by joy and peace and love on a daily basis, something that I couldn't say a while ago. So I am too excited not to share with you the reason for the hope that I have and today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Welcome back, my friends, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Christy, and I make content centered around realizing no matter where we are in life, no matter our age, we are just on time to live the life of our dreams. This may be your first video, but if you have been here for one or more videos, you probably noticed that while I'm not a strictly faith-based channel, sometimes the Jesus in me just slips right on out and... <laughs> My content is tinged with a bit of faith. So the fact that I'm a Christian is not new to you. Whether decluttering or blowing up or sharing life lessons, I will often nod to the fact that the successes that I have had in different areas is because of my relationship with God. And it's not to quote unquote, throw it in people's faces, but it really is the fact that because I am sharing my life, because I am sharing my story and the things that I have learned, trying to hide or ignore the fact that my faith is the biggest part of who I am is about as impossible as trying to ignore the fact that I am a black woman wearing like a blue dress, like duh. <laughs> and I share him, I share the reason that I have hope because I remember a time when I didn't, times of great sadness and loneliness and confusion and just darkness and feeling like I was just stuck in this hole that I couldn't get out of. And it was in those moments that I felt so low and so unworthy that he showed himself to me and he let me know that I don't have to do this alone. I have shared some small bits of my story when I feel like it's relevant to the content, but for the most part, I have kept that to myself because it's not a time that I like to think about a lot. Like there is probably a whole decade where, yeah, that I just don't much care to, to think about, but because it is Easter, because this is Resurrection Weekend, I think it's really, really important to share that piece and share the reason for my hope. I have told you before that I lost my parents when I was in my 20s, and yes, it was a really sad time, as you can probably imagine, but it was also a really, like, really dark time for me as well. I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor, and church life was basically what I knew. We went on Sundays, we went on Wednesdays for Bible study, and sometimes other times throughout the week as well. But we also lived our life outside of the walls of the church. My Both of my parents had advanced degrees. My dad was a doctor, he was a chiropractor, and he had his own practice. My mom was a lifelong educator, and she taught at the high school level. That was really her passion, and she also adjuncted at the college level as well. And the careers that my parents had allowed us to be able to live a really comfortable and cushy, like upper middle class life. And my whole idea and experience of being a Christian was believe in Jesus as Savior, be a good person, make the right choices, and then you're going to have a happy life and you'll go to heaven. Life had been really good to me and so it was super easy to have hope. At some point, right around the time that I was in college, things with my dad's practice took a turn and we ended up going through all of our savings just to like make ends meet. And it was a real financial strain on my parents. My parents were incredibly private people and did not share a lot of the struggles that they were going through even with us. And I know that it weighed so heavily on them and it ended up manifesting in their health. In 2005, when I was 24, uh, turning 25, my mom got really sick. And then in January, 2006, she was in the hospital. Uh, turned out that she had stage four breast cancer that had metastasized all over her body and there was just nothing that they could do. So the doctor sent her home and by February, February 2nd, actually, she was gone. And 
my parents have been together since high school and so my dad did not <laughs> take it well he started to get really sick and by this time i had moved out i my job and where i lived was clear on the other side of town in dallas if you know dallas it's pretty big and trying to get from one place to the next is not always that easy but i was going back and forth between like after work several times a week would go home to check on my dad to check on my sister and brother just to make sure that things were okay but then on father's day of 2008 my dad also passed i was 27 my sister was 18 she had just graduated from high school a few weeks before and my brother was 15 and so it was it was sad on top of that because my dad was so out of it because he was getting sick too uh the life insurance policy that he had uh it lapsed and we were broke bills and debt just piled on one another as the oldest and the one who had already graduated from college and had a job and all of this stuff i felt the natural responsibility of taking over this parent role for my siblings and i remember feeling so alone so abandoned by god abandoned by my parents by people who were supposed to be close to me who had disappointed me um i cried myself to sleep for hours nearly every single day like big heaving ugly sobs of just like why <laughs> i saw very little good in life um most of the time i didn't really want to be here anymore i developed this really bad eating disorder that was a way for me to be able to control all of the things that felt so out of control in my life and i hid it from everybody like this video will be the first time a lot of people are hearing about that basically almost everybody except for my husband and a couple of other people but um yeah i hit it very well just trying to maintain some semblance of order and structure and control throughout all of this i still went to church i did all of the christian things but i was so so angry with god because what i was going through just did not match up with all of the things that i knew to be true about him believe in christ live a good life do the things that you're supposed to do and you will have a happy life and at the end of it all you'll go to heaven heaven felt like such a far off promise and life right now just it sucked and because of all the trauma that i had experienced in a really short amount of time any amount of confidence that i had was completely stripped away and i was looking to fill that void in lots of other things in my love of people that were in my life in food in even going to church and doing church things but i did not have a true understanding of what it meant to have a relationship with christ i'd had a very limited understanding of what it meant when i accepted jesus as savior but as like the years progressed as time passed god revealed himself to me in such a completely new and different way i came to understand that jesus died and rose yes for my sins yes so that i could go to heaven and be saved but it was also for my right now people have gotten so much wrong about the christian faith have misquoted scriptures to like no end and it makes things really confusing he never said that we wouldn't go things in fact he never even said that he would not put on us more than we could handle or more than we could bear that is a misquote of a scripture that says he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear which is a very very different thing but what he did promise is that if we accept him he will always be with us through it and coming to learn that was just a very eye-opening for me because it meant that just because i was going through some hurt did not change the fact that god is good so many times when we go through things we ask okay like where is god in this and if we have faith the things that we go through the painful and hurtful things that we go through end up being things that sometimes shake our faith 
Or if we don't have faith, it's proof to us that, oh, God isn't real, he doesn't exist. Because there is no possible way that a good and real God would let bad things happen. But we have free will and we live in a broken world where bad things happen. But Jesus' sacrifice is a promise to all of us who believe that one day he is going to come and he is going to restore all of the things that have been broken. When we don't understand that, we end up looking to other things like I did to help fill that gap that we can't quite reconcile. Some will look to the universe of saying, okay, well, I believe in the universe and that can help to make sense of why both good and bad things happen. It brings back a sense of control and then we don't have to deal with God at all because then it's all about us and what we can do for ourselves and the power of life and death and everything is within us. But life isn't just about us as individuals. God's plan of redemption and restoration means that we and the things that we go through are a lot more connected. And when we are solely focused on us, we can't see that. But even though his plan is more than about us as individuals, he wants to have an individual relationship with us. He wants for all of us to come to know him in a real and individualized way. And then as we accept the sacrifice of his son and then we grow this relationship with him, he in turn gives us hope, not just for our souls, not just for our future that does sometimes feel really far off, but also for our present right now, he gives us glimpses into where his hand is through all of these situations. He lets us know that we don't have to go through life and through all of these things alone, that we don't have to hurt by ourselves and that when we hurt, he is hurting with us. He is always there in our highest highs, but also in our lowest lows. And he does not waste any of the hurts or the pains or the things that we go through. As someone who grew up in church, being a Christian was always a part of me, but I did not know if that was just because how I grew up. But when I was in my lowest moment, when I was hurting the most, that was when God revealed himself so clearly to me. When I chose to trust him, I learned that he could handle my questions. I learned that he was patient and that he was kind and he was loving. And as I leaned in to him, he gave me peace about all of the things that I was dealing with and hoped that as I trusted him, he was always gonna be with me. That is my testimony. Every day isn't perfect. I still experience things that I don't like, but I know that God loves me. And growing in that knowledge has been the greatest value add to my life. I celebrate this resurrection weekend because of the hope that it reminds me of. After watching, maybe you're thinking, that's cool, do your thing, I'm still do me. Or maybe you're wondering more about what it actually means to be a Christian. Maybe you're also feeling hopeless and this gave you some encouragement to discover God for yourself. If so, I will have some resources linked in the description below. The goal of this video is not to explain in a way that convinces you to believe what I believe. I don't have the power to do that. You may still have a ton of questions about the Bible, about Christians, about things that I didn't get a chance to go into detail in this video. The goal of this video is to share the reason that I have hope and joy and love and peace and confidence in all of the things that I had lost at one point, on the good days, on the bad days, on all of the days in between, because I have a savior who loves me so much and who wants to have a relationship with me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it encouraged you or at least inspired you to think about Christianity in a different way. So with that, I love you. I'll see you in my next. Happy Easter. Bye for now.